So the first step in the building process is going to be milling the wood. What basically means is to take what you already have, which is, in my case, especially given the fact that you don't work with very long piece, you, you, you work with smaller piece, they are already pretty straight. Uh, nevertheless, I still have to cut them for to their final uh, uh, thickness and width, so I'm still going to mill it. I'm going to use the jointer and make sure that one of the sides is completely straight and then we're going to put it in the plane and we're going to do the opposite face also completely straight and parallel to the first one then go back to the jointer and do one of the smaller faces and finally to make the right width I'll do the last face on the table saw so you'll have four perfect straight faces hopefully Every single piece of the 20 parts have now been joined on one side. What's going to happen now, we're going to take a jointed face, we're going to turn it upside down, we're going to pass it through the machine, and the blades that is here will cut, will flatten the top part by referencing the bottom part which means bottom and top will be parallel to each other and at the same time I'm going to achieve the required thickness which is two and a half millimeters okay I have all the parts now done all four sides uh, it's time to start working on their length and that means working on their angles uh, the first thing we're going to do is assuming I'm sitting inside the cockpit and you're outside the cockpit looking from the outside i'm going to start building the front two rails on the top side uh, they are at about 50 degrees angle which means each piece will get a 25 degree on one side 25 on the other side together that make the 50 and i'll cut them here This is the first part that we've cut, it's uh, part one of the design and it's basically the front side uh, on top. I'm going to use, in order to put this together I'm going to use glue, then put them together and use pocket holes from one side to the other. I've already marked pretty much where I want my pocket holes to be. And I believe that this should be a strong enough joint
130.1 degrees. 0.1 degrees off. I think I'm extremely happy. By 130, that, that basically means 50 degrees wide. It's uh, 180 minus 130 gives you uh, 50 degrees, which is the originally 25 and 25 that we made. These two pieces together makes part six. And what basically is, as it, if I sit in the cockpit, is the 45 degree part that is basically in between the two windows. What I'm going to do is glue them together and then screw them also but instead of instead of using screws I will be using uh, bolts and nuts. I'm going to mark the points where I want the, uh, uh, to pre-drill for the bolt and nuts and I'll do that on the drill press. We're going to use an 8 millimeters thick bolt and in order for me to do the same thing I did on the front side but make sure that they are aligned I'm going to drill with uh, this drill bit which is only at 3 millimeters until I come out to the other side and then I would put this back and drill from the other side. Final thing now, the holes that we made with a 3mm bit, we're going to make it bigger with a 8mm, which is the thickness of the bolt. I marked roughly where I put the two pocket screws here because when I mount this I'm going to need to screw from the top into this base and the last thing I want to do is end up hitting those screws so I better figure out now what I'm going to be drilling.
The front windows are now ready, and uh, this this part here and the part on the other side is the one that basically made me the craziest. I think there is way too many too many angles uh, to cut, but uh, after a few uh, trial and errors, it actually uh, eventually worked. The next part would be part four out of the design, and that basically is the the bottom part of the side window that starts attached to this side here and continues this way. I finally managed to finish the window frame. This was the most difficult, it was the most annoying, it was the most irritating part I've ever done on the simulator. More than once I pretty much nearly gave up. Uh, the only solution was to buy one already made. Uh, the problem is that those that, uh, uh, that you can buy from companies like uh, Flying Gravity or whoever makes them, they will not fit my cockpit because the way this frame is made is is slimmer than uh, than the original ones. So from this point here to basically the point down there, it will be thinner than, than the ones you normally buy in the shop. So I basically had to do everything to try and finish it by myself. So what comes next? The front two windows are pretty much finished. Uh, the, two, the two sides, I'm going to undo them completely. And uh, I will be basically removing the screws. It's a little bit too much light. Let's see if you can see them this way up. So I'm going to remove all these screws and put glue in the joints and then screw it back together. And basically I'll be doing that. I'll be doing that everywhere at the bottom, at the back. Uh, the front windows are already glued. This, this is all glued. The bottom is glued. Here is already glued. Once that is finished, I'll uh, start bringing on the cockpit the forearm part. I will, uh, I will hook them to the MIP and then I'll bring the other two sides and I'll try and figure out how we're going to connect that to the, to the side walls. I wanted to really film how I, I made it, but I, I tell you this, I've I had to redone from scratch so many parts because it's just way too many angles and uh, I, I just at one point I got so frustrated that I just threw everything out. Well, I didn't throw everything out. I, I just was getting so frustrated that I I, I just, stopped, uh, just stopped filming because I was already doing the same piece over and over. So let's see where we're getting to and uh, I'll film when I start uh, building it uh, upstairs on the map. It's time for the front window installations on the cockpit by the MIP and what I've done I've cut four of these pieces here 
all at the same height. And the way I came up for this height is, uh, well, I'm not hundred percent sure it is right, but this is the information I found on the on uh, around the web. So this is right now clamped upside down. This is the bottom side, and those are the, this is the top side of the windows. We know that the top side of the window is horizontal at the same level with the start of the overhead panel. And we know that the overhead panel, where it starts, is at 20 centimeters from the highest point of the MIP, which means that the MIP has to be at 20 centimeters from the highest point of the window. So I've calculated that and I came up with how much do I need to lift from the MIP stand, how much do I need to lift my windows. So my windows are going to sit on four of this, they'll be like that, one here, here, here and there, obviously it will go upside down and this part here will be then connected to the MIP stand at the back of where the, basically where the MIP is standing. So I pre-drilled, I made few holes already here. Uh, I'm going to put glue on this because I see no reason why I would dismantle this. Um, even if the windows will need to be moved away, it's probably a good idea to always move it away with their own stand so I know where, where they need to always go. probably over exaggerating putting four screws but I just the frame itself the window frame it, it gets a lot of weight eventually when you build the the, the the ceiling and you build the overhead panel I just want to make sure that it, it doesn't get the opportunity to bend to break better safe than sorry this is the back of the MIP as you can see all the messy wires when I was measuring how high the window should have gone and deciding where the four, four pillars would sit, I marked them. I marked the four marks around the pillar. This is where it was standing. And what I've done, I've done that obviously four times. There is another one there and two more down there. And what I've done now, I've pre-drilled four holes. I'll bring the windows with the pillars back, sit them in the right side. Sit them in the right spot and then from under the MIP down there, I'll screw them upwards. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to use glue because, well, this is the place where probably more than once will be unscrewed either during, uh, for whatever reason. So I don't want them stuck uh, permanently. Okay, the windows are all screwed in. Obviously, like pretty much everything I do, I did it without any lack of uh, swearing because it was so difficult to, to do it. But at least we're done and they are really stable. Now the next part. I'm going to make sure that the side wall is fixed to the ground. Right now there is this part that are not fixed yet. And then I'll mount the side windows. 